Hello, everyone. This is the Circuit Python Weekly for Monday, September 9th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things Circuit Python. I'm Liz. I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on Circuit Python. Circuit Python is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Circuit Python development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a shared notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. File notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view parts of the video that interests you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages, find latest notes doc, so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. First part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. Second part is state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by numbers separate from our status updates. Third part is hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to report on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing in the last week since last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week. And the fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity to, for more long form discussions, these discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting would go. And with that, We'll get started with community news. And so some highlights this week. Making a mobility control assistant. David Barrett looked into making a device which can be added to a wheelchair or strapped to the body, allowing control tailored to each user. It can use various microcontroller boards running CircuitPython. And then 4,000 stars on the CircuitPython GitHub repo. CircuitPython has reached over 4,000 stars on GitHub. Thank you to all our fabulous CircuitPython community developing projects with CircuitPython. And then we always feature new notes from Adafruit Playground. And one from Foamy Guy this week was prepare beautiful flat icons for use with CircuitPython. I thought that looked pretty interesting. So these news items and more are available in our weekly Python, Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Monday mornings. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python on hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open a PR on GitHub in the CircuitPython weekly newsletter repo, tag Anne Engineer or hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon or X, or email cpnews at adafruit.com with a link. And that is community news. Next up is State of CircuitPython Libraries and Blinka. So this is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core, libraries, and Blinka. So overall, there were 23 pull requests merged by 16 authors. Um, some folks I don't normally see. James Bowman, Tim DeChant, uh, Danku, Circuit Art, uh, Pierpani, uh, E.G. E. G. J. Morrington, uh, Joseph Marty Elias, Hex That, um, Constantine, and also folks who are always um, regular contributors who we appreciate. There were five reviewers, Dan Halpert, Maker Melissa, Foamy Guy, Tanu, and Jepler, and seven closed issues by five people, ten opened by seven people. And now we'll hear from Scott about the core. 
Thank you, Liz. Okay, so numbers for the core, we had 15 pull requests merged from 11 different authors, which is awesome. Thank you to all of our authors. Uh, we had two reviewers, Dan and myself. Um, we have 20 open pull requests, which is comfortably under our one page goal. A number of these are over 100 days old, though, so it would be great to go back and uh, close the ones that we don't think are actually going to be uh, actually going to be acted on. We don't need ones that are 797 days old. Those are not not really helpful. Um, so that's where we are on pull requests. Um, we are the other the youngest one that's still open is eight days old. So uh, we are getting a lot through as well. Um, obviously, we have four closed issues by two people and five open by three people, so we're not up one. We have a total of 738 open issues. We have eight active milestones. These are how we track um, Adafruit funded prioritization. Um, the two that I'm going to highlight today are 91X, which is bugs that we'd like to fix on the current stable release, although we may end up just doing it in the, in the alpha instead. And we have 920, so there are 11 open issues on 91X and only one open issue on 92. So um, we're, we're trying to work through those and get those ready for a stable 92 release shortly. And uh, we are also keeping up with triaging as well. Great, thank you. And now we'll turn it over to Tim to talk about the libraries. Yeah, thanks Liz. Uh, this section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries, all of which can be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. These tend to fall in the, the two sort of high level groups of either a driver library that helps you interface with some piece of hardware, or a helper library that lets you create a project without worrying about as many of the complex details underneath the hood. Across all of those libraries this week, we had six pull requests merged by four different authors. Uh, a couple of the names, uh, I think maybe were mentioned before, but just uh, in case any weren't, uh, the names that were newer uh, or less frequent to me, I think I've seen some of these before, but just not popping up uh, all the time. E, uh, e G, J, Morrington, uh, Pierre Panny, and Tim Chanowski this week, thanks to those folks, and our more usual uh, contributors. We had four different reviewers, uh, again, mostly the, the usual team. Uh, the oldest pull request that was merged this week was 153 days old. The newest one was down at one day. That leaves us at the end of the week with 39 open pull requests. The oldest one of those uh, is a draft that is at 753 days. The newest one is listed at three days here. Uh, we had three issues closed in the last seven days by three people with three new issues opened up by three people. And that leaves us with 882 open issues, and of those, there are 102 of them that are labeled as good first issues, uh, which you can find listed over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is a website that you should head to if you are interested in getting involved in CircuitPython on the coding and contributing side of things. On that page, you're going to find a list of open PRs across all of the CircuitPython libraries. You can take a look through that list. Uh, find anything that is either interesting to you or that you've got some hardware that you feel like you could do the testing on. Uh, click through to GitHub, take a look at what the PR is, download the code locally and run it on your hardware if you do have that. Otherwise, take a look through the code for um, syntax, logic, spelling, anything uh, anything and everything, really. Uh, leave a comment over on GitHub. Let us know that you looked it over, what you found. Uh, if you were able to run it on some hardware, let us know that and how it went. Once you get comfortable with that, if you'd like to, we can get you leveled up to the review team so you can leave official reviews on GitHub as well. Um, back on that circuitpython.org slash contributing page, there are some links across the top. You can click as well to get over to a list of the open issues instead of PRs. Uh, so you can click over there if you'd like to actually try your hand at uh, getting some code uh, merged in. So you can look through that list of open issues and again, find something that's interesting to you or that you've got the hardware for. Um, click through again to GitHub, figure out what that issue is about, whether it's a bug fix or a new feature or whatever. Uh, go ahead and make an attempt to solve uh, whatever that issue is and then submit your own PR with your changes to it. If you need help with any of that process, we have a learn guide about uh, contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. We also have folks who are around throughout the week on the Discord who would be happy to help you get spun up if you are interested in doing this and feel like you need some help. So please, uh, if that's you and you want to, but you need some help, come say hi on the Discord. We'd be more than happy to help you out. 
Um, in terms of the library PyPI weekly download stats this week, we had uh, 170,311 PyPI downloads across the 333 libraries. The top 10 list is here in the notes doc. Uh, the new libraries this week in the community bundle is a uh, button handler library. And then there are a couple of updates here as well if you want to see in the notes doc. Uh, and that's what we've got for libraries this week. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Melissa to talk about Blinka. Hello. Uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. This week we had two pull requests merged by one author and one reviewer, myself. Um, there were five open pull requests amongst all the repositories. That leaves, uh, there were zero closed issues and two open by two people, leaving a net of 105 open issues. We are at 14,277 PyPI downloads in the last week, uh, 16,525 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 146 supporting boards. And that's it. Great. Thank you. And that's going to wrap up State of Serga Python Libraries and Blinka. Next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I will start. Then we'll go down the list alphabetically or to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or are missing the meeting, I will read your notes when I get to them in the list. So I will start. Uh, Hug Report to Dan for running the meeting last week while I was still recovering from COVID. Uh, Tanute for fixing BLE HID. And a group hug. And now we'll hear from Dan. Okay, uh, thanks to the Raspberry Pi, Pi folks who devised the infamous RP2350 E9 Erratum for the RP2350. More on that later. And thanks to Todd Bot for some discussions in the issue about Touch.io. That's it. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Foamy Guy and then Melissa after that. All right, uh, just a group hug from me. Thanks to everybody. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Melissa, and then I'll read from Mark. I want to give a hug to Scott for fixing the tiny UF2 AWS issue. Uh, hug to you, Liz, for testing out the code editor fixes and your hug to everyone else. Thank you, and thank you for all the back and forth with the code editor. Uh, then I'll read for Mark and Sam, and then we'll hear from Scott. So Mark, uh, Hug report to Jepler for providing me information and discussion about how SynthIO works and some ideas on audio effects processing. And then Toddbot and Tanu for ideas on an API for audio effects. And then Sam Blenny, thanks to Tanu and Maker Melissa for ESP32 bug fixes. And now we'll hear from Tanu. Hello, uh, just a quick hug to B Whitman, Brian Whitman, for starting the ESP32 P4 port. Great. Which I fixed. Excellent. <laughs> All right. And that was Hug Reports. Next up is Status Updates. Status Updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I will start and we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If the discussion becomes too long for Status Updates, we can move it to In the Weeds. So I will start. I had COVID for the first time. So I am just getting back to work since the end of last week. It definitely knocked me out more than I expected. Um, but I am working on a project that uses an ESP32 S3 with one of the new RS232 breakouts. I'm using the Bluefruit Connect app to send RS232 messages. So I press the buttons in the app and then it switches um, the RS232. I'm using it with an HDMI switcher. Uh, and this guide will hopefully be wrapped up this week. I've also been working on documenting the Cutie Pie CH32V203. Uh, this board does not run CircuitPython, but it's another one of those weird WCH chips. And huge thanks to TAC for putting in a lot of work to TinyUSB and the WCH Arduino board support package to make using the board a lot easier. He also assisted me with troubleshooting my own toolchain setup, which I really appreciated. And I document all of that in the guide, so hopefully other folks will not have those problems. Um, and now we'll hear from Dan. Okay. Uh, so I've been working on the MicroPython version 1.23 merge. Um, it's well along. I get to compile things and 
hide things in the REPL and things come back. I'm fixing a problem with frozen modules right now. I haven't run the test suite yet. So uh, when I start working on that, that that's the next, that's the last thing to do basically. Um, but I, it's looking good. And it's less, it's less problematic than the previous merge was. Um, so next, as I mentioned, uh, Raspberry Pi uh, revised an erratum. It has to do with the new RP2350 chip, chip. And the problem is that there's a sort of a circuitry bug uh, on GPIO pins when uh, you try to read them if the pins um, are not pulled up or if they're not uh, pulled down or there's not a strong, pulled down strongly and by strongly less like 8.2K or less resistor, or unless you have like a firm in, uh, input signal to them, to supplying a lot of current. The trouble is that there's a lot more leakage current on the pins than usual, and you have to try, have to overcome that. So uh, they revised um, the original erratum, which was, kind of confusing and incomplete. And uh, now they have this new erratum. Uh, they haven't said whether they're, whether they're gonna try to uh, supply some support to the, the workaround or not in the Pico SDK, which is the low level uh, SDK that we use. Um, so we have several questions about how we're going to deal with this chip. Uh, one question was, how do we do touch IO? We can't do touch IO. The, generic old way, which is to use a weak pull down. Uh, in a discussion, in an internal discussion we just had, we decided we're just gonna turn off touch IO. It's possible to use touch IO and use a weak pull up, but uh, that's different from the way it works. And we will just turn it off for now because it's sort of non-standard and it might cause more support questions than just leaving it off. Also, um, the erratum uh, describes a complicated workaround for reading a pin that doesn't have a, a strong signal on it. And we could implement that workaround, but it's really, it's not completely obvious when to do that workaround. It's complicated. It means it, it's, it will slow down the pin read and it's just something that we don't want to do on a regular basis. So again, internally, what we decided is that we will just not implement this workaround and you need to use the pin in a way that is not problematic. So that means use a strong pull down or use a pull up or use a strong input signal. And uh, if you try to use a weak pull down or use the internal pull down, it's not gonna work the way you expect. And that's from our point of view, a bug. And uh, so the basic rule is if it hurts, don't do that. So don't do that. And I will, will, of course, document this in the CircuitPython documentation, but right now we're only going to try to uh, figure out a workaround that isn't going to be applicable all the time anyway, and it's going to require a lot of explanation. And then finally, so I've been working on uh, some, you know, just getting some PRs uh, through the system, uh, fixing a few things like board overflows. Uh, we'll probably go ahead and uh, release a, another 920 alpha. And then when I finish the merge or if we do it together, when we all finish the merge, uh, then we'll release the first 920 beta. And so we'll probably have an alpha sooner than the merge, unless suddenly it all goes well really fast, which is probably, which is not likely. And that's it. Great, thank you, Dan. And now we'll hear from Foamy Guy. All right, thanks. Um, I last week was working on some more library PR reviews and testing, relatively um, re regular uh, occurrence for me. Uh, and in doing so, uh, found what became my second item for this week, which was investigating a syntax oddity in one of those libraries that caused the MPY cross to fail, um, and found the cause of that and a suitable alternative um, that actually still makes PyLint or um, pre-commit and everything all happy still. So. Um, that was nice. Uh, I implemented a few more of the intersection functions uh, that would be needed to be able to make the polygon intersection function, which I've been working on 
off and on the last couple of weeks for Vector IO. Um, this week, I am writing up a game I made a little uh, while back uh, called Blinka Says, which is kind of a take on the Simon, um, not quite board game, but tabletop electronic game. Uh, I'm writing that up into a learn guide. I hope to wrap up the Serial plot Plotter PR uh, this week to get it out of draft and start getting some feedback on that. And then um, outside of CircuitPython this weekend, I started working through this thing called Pico CTF, which is like a competition put on by Carnegie Mellon. Um, university for, I think, middle school and high school students mostly. Um, but after their competitions complete, they put up all of their little uh, CTF challenges online. You can get them if you just uh, create a free account. Um, and I've been working my way through those. There's some really cool puzzles and challenges in there. If anyone's interested in that sort of thing, I definitely recommend giving it a shot. That's what I've got. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And now I'll read for Jepler, and then we'll hear from maker Melissa. So Jepler has been working on RP2350 support for the new PIO features, so that's in progress. Uh, changes in PIO ASM look complete, and then we'll need changes in State Machine Constructor to set new hardware registers. And now we'll hear from maker Melissa. Hello. Um, let's see, I've been... Uh, I unsuccessfully worked on trying to fix the tightening of two GitHub actions, but uh, Scott was able to fix that. I fixed the web serial ESP tool for the ESP32 S3 boards. I also fixed the release drafter for that repo, and I continued working on creating a home assistant integration for Adafruit IO. That's where I'm at. Great, thank you. Uh, couldn't find my button for a second. Uh, I will read for Mark, and then we'll hear from Scott. So Mark has been working on adding a base for audio effects issue 8974, proof of concept, looking for any feedback on the issue, ideas, suggestions, concerns, etc. This will, as time permits, uh, continue to develop a working proof of concept. I saw that go by. It looks very cool. Um, and now we will hear from Scott. Hello. Uh, first, uh, some news. I mentioned this on my stream on Friday, but I wanted to let the wider community know we are expecting our second kiddo um, at the end of October. So likely won't the kid probably won't come this month, but next month uh, towards the end, it'll be more and more likely. So be aware of that. Uh, my plan is to take four weeks off at the start and then come back to work and then do a lot more time uh, once my partner goes back to work. So looks like you know most of November I'll be out, and then um, April or May is when I'll start taking time off, like fully off, and then when I come back, I'll, I'll likely be part time as well. Um, so just know that's coming, um, so that when I disappear, you're not surprised. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's the news. Uh, in what I did this week, I fixed BLE descriptors on ESP32, so BLE HID works now, which is exciting. Um, I debugged an issue with the Feather RP2350. Turns out it was the same issue that we have on the RP2040, but um, in CircuitPython I'd broken the setting, so even for RP2040 I'd broken it. And then um, in Arduino it was only done on the 2040, not the 2350. So um, we've unblocked. Feather RP2350s, which is exciting. Um, they should hopefully hit the shop this week. Uh, I wanted to do, to do something fun, so I continued B. Whitman's P4 work um, because I got a, a, the ESP32 P4 is a new chip from Espressif. Um, it's very high speed, but it doesn't have any networking stuff. I got a board for that and uh, got CircuitPython running. Um, USB doesn't work yet, um, but I've uh, started an issue on tiny USB and poked Espressive about it. So TAC and Espressive will be coordinating getting uh, their USB work upstreamed into the tiny USB that we use. Um, so I'm kind of like waiting on that. But I might submit it anyway, even though USB doesn't work. Um, I hit an ice C issue when I was trying to do a BLE HID demo. And it's uh, one that somebody had already hit and it's blocking the release. So I'm going to look at that, uh, but kind of time box myself because I'm not not sure I'm going to be able to fix it. Um, I updated to ESP IDF 5.3 to see if the I squared C thing was fixed. I don't think it is, but I should PR that today because that's a good uh, 5.3.1, I should say. So a bug fix on 5.3. Um, that's obviously something we want to get in. 
And then my overall goal is to get back to circuit matter this week so that I can uh, kind of get a full end-to-end -end circuit matter thing going by the time I, I turn into a dad again. Um, so yeah, that's my plan. Great. Thank you, Scott, and congratulations to you and your partner. Uh, so I'm not seeing any in the weeds topics, so I think we can go ahead and wrap things up. Um, this has been CircuitPython Weekly for Monday, September 9th, 2024. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It'll also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Or, and uh, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. And we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone.